Going into the offseason, it was unclear whether the Bulls would in fact retain restricted free agent Io DeSumo, who was coming off a down season after a better than expected rookie year, getting second team All-NBA honors as a second round draft pick. But in his sophomore season after being thrown into the starting lineup due to the injury of Lonzo Ball and a huge opportunity to show his worth, Io struggled to maintain any kind of consistency on offense, seeing a big dip in his overall production and shooting, and his decision making on the court was often questionable, which left him out of the closing lineup, especially after after the Bulls brought in Patrick Beverly, and what was once a promising prospect and a steal of the draft that the Bulls got with the 38th selection in the 21 draft, quickly turned into a player that might not be remaining with the team for very long. But much to the Bulls and Bulls fans' pleasure, Ayodosumu has managed to turn his level of play around and not only exceeding what we saw from him last season, but even better than his rookie year. So good that he has been one of the biggest success stories and brightest spots in development this season for the Bulls. And believe it or not, even though he won't win the award, Io has even made a case for himself to be the league most improved player of the year. How, you might ask? Well, let's talk about it. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, of course, you guys know the Bulls are back in action after the All-Star break starting tomorrow against the league's best Boston Celtics. Going to be a tough matchup at the United Center. Also, we got the unfortunate news about Torrey Craig, which I'll cover in a separate topic. But that's not going to stop me from making predictions on player props. And you know the best place to do that is with Underdog Fantasy, the sponsor of this channel. For those that aren't familiar with Underdog, let me tell you about the app and my personal favorite that I use on the app, NBA Pickums. With Pickums, you can pick higher or lower on most player stats and win money based on the ones you get right. You pick higher or lower and you could win up to 20 times your money in a single night if you do five pickums and you get them all right and guys they're offering viewers of this channel an exclusive offer if you use the code bull central you'll get your first deposit doubled up to hundred dollars who doesn't want free money right it's really that simple it's also a great way to support the channel as well i'll leave a link to the site and the code in the description if you're interested and let me know what picks you guys end up making now like i mentioned going into the off season i really wasn't sure if i was going to be returning to this team I mean, not only were they in a tight situation relative to the salary cap and that dreaded tax line, but the Bulls re-signing Vucevic and then signing Kobe to that three-year deal right when free agency opened, which has now turned into one of the biggest bargain contracts of the offseason, given Kobe as having a breakout year. But with the Bulls signing Kobe, and especially considering Kobe had shown so many areas of improvement from the prior season, and the fact that one of the Bulls' first free agency signings after Kobe was inked to a deal was Javon Carter to that three-year contract, yet another guard, and a guard that was expected to to help with the Bulls' three-point shooting woes. And at that, Io looked all but like the odd man out and remaining with this team because the lineup was already guard-heavy as it was. You now add Javon Carter into the mix and you think, well, even if the Bulls do re-sign Io, where is he going to fit into the rotation with Kobe, Caruso, and now Javon Carter? And then, of course, weeks passed, Io still didn't sign a deal until finally we get the news on the Bulls and Desumu agreeing to a three-year $21 million contract, which at that time, while most thought that was a pretty fair deal for Io given his age and the fact that the annual rate was well below the mid-level exception and would continue to look even better over the course of the three years as the salary cap increased, there were still a few who actually thought that was a bad contract, that it didn't make sense for the Bulls given their roster construction and the fact that they felt it was an overpay for Io who shouldn't be making anything more than $5 million a year. Again, that was at the offseason but right away from the start of the year, and especially more recently leading up to the break. Io has far exceeded his annual contract value and is having one of the biggest jumps from one season to the next in the NBA. Now, like I said, Io is not gonna win most improved player of the year. That's really gonna be between Kobe and Tyrese Maxey. And as I said in a prior video, in my somewhat biased opinion, it should be Kobe. But regardless, Io has improved so much in so many facets of his game that he's making a case to be a top most improved player of the year candidate. And I wouldn't be shocked to see him finishing in the top 10 and voting for that award, depending on how he finishes out the year. Consider this for a moment. In the past three games, before going into the All-Star break, Aodosumu had made 14 threes, shooting 14 for 22 from downtown over the course of those three games. That's 63% on seven attempts per game in those three contests. Small sample size, yes, but 14 threes made is 23% of the total threes he made all of last season, and he played 80 games last year. Small sample size in those three games, but Io is shooting 41.7% from three on 3.3 attempts per game for the season thus far. Very solid efficiency on that volume for a guy who shot 31% from three last year on slightly fewer attempts. 
He also brought his overall field goal percentage above 50% despite putting up more attempts than he did last year. He's shooting a ridiculous 61% true shooting percentage, the highest of his career, and up from 56% last season. He's also upped his overall defensive efficiency, increasing his overall number of deflections per game, charges drawn, and forcing turnovers to his opponent. Opponents are also shooting far worse than they did last season. Com Opponents are also shooting far worse than they did last season when being guarded by Io, particularly Trey Young. And he's increased his overall steal percentage and block percentage this season compared to last. As it relates to Io's shooting, because he really went from being a non-factor as a shooting threat and helping space the floor to now being a legitimate 3 and D wing. Io has credited Peter Patton, the Bulls player development coach who really was brought in for his shooting expertise and helping him understand his shot and what works and what doesn't, what's a good shot versus what's a bad shot, how to improve the overall timing of his release, and you've seen that manifest itself with his shooting on the court. He's much more patient with his selection, he's much better at finding ways to get open and playing off the ball, he significantly improved his pump fake and getting the defender to bite and allowing him to get a better look on the follow through. And look, the shooting aside and all the other statistical improvements we've seen from Io across the board, the biggest thing that stands out to me is Io's confidence when he's on the court. He's much more comfortable in taking shots than he normally passed up last season, he's much more aggressive in driving to the basket, and unlike a lot of guys on the team, Io is all about pushing the pace and transition, getting downhill and finding the open man or taking it all the way himself. His ability to weave in and out of traffic has gotten better, his defensive effort has always been there, but he's gotten much smarter on the defensive end in the way he's been able to navigate through screens, anticipating passes, forcing turnovers without fouling. Don't get me wrong, he still makes mistakes on defense sometimes, he's had some miscues on that end which has resulted in him getting taken off the court in a hurry, but obviously he's still young, still learning and only his third season in the league. What I would like to see more from Io, and hopefully that will come with time, is his on-ball creation, creating not only for himself with the ball in his hands, but for others. His court vision overall has improved, but if the Bulls really want to become this high-paced, heavy ball movement offense that isn't so focused on operating in the half court, then they're going to need their guards to have the ability to create more and generate offense not only through their own scoring, but generating looks for others. But anyway, I've tweeted this before, but it's crazy to think that Io went from being an afterthought in free agency to the point where we weren't sure if he was going to be staying with the team or even finding a spot in the rotation to now being one of the biggest value contracts in the NBA for his overall level of production. And when you look at the combination of his deal and Kobe White's deal, both three years, both extremely team friendly dollar amounts, both young, only 24, and you think, eh, maybe the Bulls future isn't that bleak after all, despite what everyone was portraying of this team in the early going of the season. Obviously, changes still need to be made. A lot of things need to be cleaned up in terms of their overall cap sheet, which we've talked about, but having two of your younger players on value deals locked up for three years is a positive and otherwise forgetful season for the Bulls. Let me know your guys' thoughts on Io and his development so far this season. I'd be curious to know what you guys think his ceiling is for his overall career. Let me know on that in the comments. Don't forget the Bulls are back in action tomorrow night. Until then, guys, as always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.